This is the refreshment center. When I, when I was a kid, I was at EJ Corvettes. Remember EJ Corvettes? I know uh, Corvettes, the nickel dime store. Yeah, yeah, and they sold Stormbecker cars. Oh, okay. And they had these, these models. That's what I remember. And, and when I was a kid, this was 12 bucks. I couldn't afford it. Right. This is a tower. Take a look at that. Look at that. I might be able to use this. What's your price, man? Uh, I got it on the front there. What is it? Uh, that one, I think, is in the better box. I got it a few dollars more. Uh, I, I do not need the box, but I do need what's in it. Let's have a look here. Yeah, let's take a, take a look, see. You know, the geography on my racetrack, I was telling Brad, is precious. And if, if it's too wide of a model, it isn't going to fit on top of my pits, but there's the roof line right there. Yeah, yeah. And this could be, oh boy, look at, look at how old this is, eh, guys? <laughs> that's that's yeah, classic. Yeah, that's gotten a little bit of water over yeah, the years, but it is 60 years old. It so is, it's, it is. Um, it's classic, though. Yeah, it's classic. Brad has, Brad has, uh, you go to Brad's basement. And you go into his storage room, and it takes your breath away. Wow. He has so many beautiful Fox art models. It's just, it's just stunning. That's I'm going to give you 30 bucks for this. Do uh, you want the box? Because I don't need the box. No, a lot of these guys collect boxes just for... Well, we've seen some of the box art that I, even the, that you have in your basement. It's quite beautiful. You know, yeah, The style yeah. is uh, something in itself. Yeah, but it's um, I mean it's I mean you look at things like this it's um it's just it. gorgeous just, it is gorgeous uh, look at that open it up. that's that that is that is from let's see which year is this uh, that would have been probably sixty five oh my goodness um, let's find out look at that now, oh that one had been goodness. started but um, it's, in, it's in Austin Martin yeah. my son Andy, oh. my son Andy oh, built yeah. that car a lot of times they um, they have what year it came from I'd but, say no. 60 I think it's probably 65 uh, yeah. 64, 65 somewhere in that time frame oh. but look at that box art though it's gorgeous I know this is this is history they don't make they don't design uh, the boxes so like that. Price. Well, and of course, everybody loves an Aston Martin because of this James Bond. Exactly. You know, right, right, exactly. Uh, we have, at my racetrack, we have uh, races just for vintage classic cars like this. Right, yeah. And the guys come, they're, they're a lot slower and harder to race, you know what I mean? They don't have the model that they're Let me give you your money for it. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Enjoy. Oh, yeah. I look forward to uh, seeing it on the track. I hope yes. so. Maybe we'll do something on uh, putting it together. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, yeah that, like I said, we got from... weathering. We talked about weathering. weathering. That, you know, a plastic model like this needs to be weathered. We could totally do that. I mean, from sourcing to construction, really, you know, all the way through. This, I, I don't allow this on my track, but this is tire dressing. It's a sticky... It's amazing that this is 60 years old and it's still... It's, but you can see the mess it made. Uh, it was used to run your cars over and the tires will get sticky you put them on the track and then on commercial tracks there was a groove of stickiness around it because of this stuff and, and then they outlawed it a lot of places didn't allow it these are cox wheels these are rare the hard part is you have to have a cox car with tapered axles to be able to take some of these these have uh threads on the back i know I know just by looking at it, but, um, you know, the, the school of guys my age who appreciate this is windowing. Mm -hmm. So I think the, the market has peaked. I, I really think that uh, the value of some of these have gone down. These guys are ready to make deals today. Right. Now, here's Carrera cars. These are, these are new in the box, but they're six or seven years old and they're not produced anymore thus they've doubled in value yeah at yeah. the time that these were new four or five years ago you could pick them up for about 35 40 dollars today they're 80 dollars but it's it's like any form of uh, high collecting the more rare it is the, the higher the price obviously right. exactly. so just walking around this event, it is clear to me, and talking to some of the gentlemen that we've uh, found here today, uh, these guys are recreating their childhood memories, right? You know, reliving those moments, but with adult money. <laughs> you know, they, 
As a kid, you don't have 15 bucks to spend on on a model car, but today, today you got the money and you got the enthusiasm. That's what makes this event so awesome. But let's take a look at some of these uh, some of these cars here, some of the box art. We were talking about this a little earlier. Look at some of this stuff. Even the stuff that's photographed <laughs> and not painted and all that, that displays very well. You want a decoration for your, you know, for your hobby room? You can see why people would want the box. You know what I mean? I, I feel like buying some of these myself. Take a look at this one over here. This one is a is an art piece as well, as well as the uh, scarab on top of it. Oh, those beautiful. are, I mean, those are beautiful, aren't they? I mean, especially especially this this monogram. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it just looks like something out of. It looks like something that you would see over at the Greenville Village. Exactly. And, uh, Take a look at that one. That's that's my favorite. They got the sunset in there and everything. But, oh my goodness! Oh, I love this. I, for all you guys out there who, you know, who may have raced slot cars for, for all you know, for all these years, or might have uh, childhood memories of buying these or seeing these on the shelves, I mean, that's you're walking in here, you're getting a little bit of a dopamine hit, right? <laughs> This is Tony's stash. Tony's been a good friend of mine. We used to race at Star Hobbies when we were teenagers. Sure. Remember Star Hobbies? Yeah. Out of drive in, in uh, Pelham. Yeah. Dearborn. Yeah, today. What is it today? Today they sell t shirts. No, it's a it's the art art craft. Oh yeah, art craft with yeah, they do t shirts. But um Tony has been going out of his way to collect uh, slot car parts and pieces his whole life. It's been your hobby, right, hasn't it? Oh, 50 years at least. Um, he has a basement where he has organized stuff to be empty. His basement is dedicated to being able to pull out a part for a certain car from a certain era for a guy to be able to repair his, his old slot car. And if you don't believe it, we'll do a video in his basement. It is awesome. It is awesome. Not as awesome as yours. <laughs> no, well, I got the track. I yeah, got the got track. track. But when I need a part, who do I go to? Right. Yeah. <laughs> he's Tony, he's the man. tell us about and this. Tires and wheels. These are all tires, original tires that went on cars. No, as old and as bad as they look, is there value yeah. in that? Oh, yeah. In your opinion, do you think it's peak? Do you think, I, I told the guys a little while ago that our era of guys who raced cars and bought parts like this in the 60s and the 70s baby boomers. is dwindled. Yes. Have you have you seen the value dropping, or do you still think that there's a market going up? It's dropped a little bit since about 2000. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. And it's because there's uh, so many beautiful cars ready to go, you know, in, in the boxes. Uh, but there's still guys of our era, and that, and if you pan around, these are them right here. These are all the one thirty second ready to runs are so pretty. Yeah, I have a lot of them. I just keep them in a box. I don't want to run them. Yeah, yeah, you collect them. You yeah, collect them. they're more for show than go. Right. <laughs> yeah, I have told the guys that there, there's probably more guys collecting them now than racing them. Mm -hmm. well, luckily, we've got a place like mine. Uh, track or, or Mark Henderson that with the racing guys, right? We're losing our commercial tracks. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. Yes. Tell us about that. The one in Westland closed last year. There's one in Lincoln Park, Michigan, which will be closing within a month. Now, those are commercial tracks for 124 scale cars. Right. And 132. And there is like eight lane tracks. Right. Uh, one, one thing that's uh, unique about Tony's skill is he can see a part after collecting for all these years and know what model it goes on for what year. And he's been assembling all these parts and selling them on eBay. Is that correct? You still do that? Oh, yeah. Uh, one, of, one of the cars I made uh, in, in the last video, I showed my, uh, my wooden chassis. 124 scale NASCAR. That's right, yes. I only built the one car. Black. Yeah. I, right. yes, I yeah. only built one car for another person. That was for Tony. Yeah. Usually I, I can't bear after I do all that work to, to, to He um, actually had the hood pens <laughs> on on your Mercury. Yeah. Unbelievable. He made a I Richard buy Petty. That, I want to buy that back from you. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's really beautiful cool. work. Yeah. I treasure it. Yeah, thank car. you, buddy. This gentleman has been is another man who's been collecting parts for decades. Yeah, Am right, I right exactly. Or wrong? Yeah, no, decades. you're right. Decades. decades. In, in all scales too. Yeah, look at that. If you look, these are 124 scale. Oh my goodness, this is a uh, 
Now, this is uh, this is from the late seventies into the uh, yeah late seventies where you painted the body. It was a mylar body, out, definitely out of scale. All right, I and mean, you know I'm a big stickler for scale, Steve. Right, right. But this is what everybody ran by by that time. This is an era uh, ten years after I was a teenager. Where they're racing these. Yeah. Does, does this constitute a womp womp car? No. Uh, the womp womp cars were just the flying wedges, right? Yeah. The, the womps were, were like a single piece chassis. Yeah. Uh, much like, you know, a womp, but, you know, it's indicative of womp. It's just a one piece chassis. One piece chassis. Put the motor on it, it's really not adjustable, yeah. you know. Really simple. And some guys have bodies that were just flying wedges. I mean, it's yeah. like a car, you know? yeah, exactly. But to them, it brings that, that warm and fuzzy oh, yeah, feeling. Yeah, yeah, exactly. you know? I mean, uh, That's what they kind of grew up You're young whatever. enough that maybe you grew up with that. I, I grew up with, with the real scale stuff, you know? Right, right. The stuff like this. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, tell me, this is pretty. How much is that? That's the real deal, that, too. That's $80. Now, Steve, did you put this together from parts, or did nope, you find that's, it like that's, that? I found it like that, but that's, that is the actual yeah. kit that somebody built back in the day. Yeah, wow. see, to me, I find, these, I find these scale models exciting. They're pretty when, I, when I turn to these that came later... Thingy. The thingy. Yeah, they call yeah. that a thingy. But you know what? There's guys who get that warm and fuzzy feeling from them. This is a rare car. This is a 124th scale. Porsche RSK. Now, I never had 124 scale, but I still love the detail. Okay. Now, is this car here, is this more getting into that womp that you were Yeah, this is about? wicked. I mean, there's no car that looks like that. No. Look at the wheels on that. Look at the tires on that. Here's it. Very small, yeah. I think Steve will allow us to take this car out. I, I just want to add, uh, in an earlier video, we were talking about how the wider, the wider the car and the lower the car was, the more speed it had. And there you go. And then here we have... Okay, that's good. There's a practical example for all the viewers out there who that's didn't good. get a chance to see him. Yeah, Derek brought up a good point. Here's wider, lighter, this vinyl. Yeah, 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 very light. Light and lower. Look at how out of scale these tires are. Yeah, yeah. Because all they cared about it was aerodynamics and making the car go fast on the commercial tracks. Uh, right, so that's when slot racing died. Yeah. That's, that's when slot racing died. I mean, they, they became thingies. Now, you look at this, this not even scale wheels, plus they this is all aerodynamic you know i mean it's it's more of a it's more of a speed demon than that you know it's not a yeah. you know it's not the beautiful scale like this this yeah. turns me on more you yes. know this car is incomplete <laughs> you know it's a beautiful scale model in 124 mm -hmm. scale you find that that in, you, 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 uh, it's our generation who will raise with these things are getting older. Do you find the values? You, you want you want to want the address? Yeah, 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 not, thank you. Not consistently. They're just I, I just call them just a little more inconsistent, a little more volatile, if you will. Um, they go up and down. But depending the, on the season or on the, you know, on I, the haven't state out, I haven't figured out. I haven't figured out there's any kind of real real um, plan for that or you know sequence to that. Um, but you can you can find that some of them sell for really high money, higher than yeah. they should. Yeah. Even you know. Yeah. Or <laughs> they used to. I'm, the high value I'm they so used to be, out of touch with with collectors that I, I sometimes the value blows me away on some yeah. of these cars. You know. I know. And sometimes you get surprised, and that's a car that you're gonna find. Right. That's true. That's true. Uh, Steve, I mean, you you know, there's still a couple of holy grails out there that you know I, I printed information that exists, but. No, we've never seen that. No, right. <laughs> so, do you sell year round on, on, on the internet? No, you just make new shows. I just, yeah, I just do shows now, and you know, uh, there's a few guys that will contact me and email me and text me and stuff like that. Okay. You know, with like a want list or something like that. And right, you, you know. publish your number, that's okay. Or the guys um, call you if they see something that. Uh, okay. Well, well, maybe not. We got our we're answer. No. We got our no. answer. We got our. That's why I wanted this so that they can okay. help you out. Ah, okay. Otherwise, okay. otherwise, yeah, you're not going to do I'm, that. I'm just so busy. I have my own uh, yeah, remodeling yeah. company. Okay. Yeah. okay. And I am okay. Good. crazy busy with that. I thought I was trying to help you. Ah, ah, ah. No worries. A couple more shows a year, that would help me. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
I actually I noticed um, the, the skeleton of these cars. Yes, it's chassis. No, the, the chassis. The raw um, chassis. This is impressive. This is where it starts, right here. Yeah. This is a Womp Womp chassis. And this is a chassis off of an earlier scale car. Uh, the, the Womp Womp cars were much more simpler. Uh, but like I, I said here, we have O-rings for front tires. Real dinky rear tires. So a scale, a scale car has bigger tires. And of course, this chassis goes twice as fast as this chassis. You get all the way down to oh, there. Yeah, you go. Those are, the, the, those are the flying wedges. Yeah. There's the wall. Take a look at that display case, Derek. Oh, this place. Now, now, Jim, these these right here, these are just um, they're slot cars. They're, they're, they're slot cars. They're, they're mostly run at home on plastic tracks. Those are the, if you, uh, yeah, you yeah, yeah. those are the uh, tracks that you, see what kind of you saw the box art for, you know, with the, with the guy and his dad his with a tiny little uh, plastic track, yeah, right. you know, that's, you, that was that, that's that kind of car. Could you tell us about, um, could you tell us about these HO cars? I don't know anything about HO. What do you want to know? Well, there's different types, right? There's some jets or something. There's some jets. Are there's T jets. There's. Could you show us the difference? What's a T jet? Right. Uh, T jet is an older chassis. This is from the 60s. Let's see this. Take a look at that. Okay, it's so. The Thunder, jet cha or Thunder jet chassis. Yeah. So, what are we yeah. looking at? Does this have magnets? This has, this is, has magnets in it, correct? It does. Mm -hmm. T-Jets have magnets. They all have What's magnets. a car like that sell? Uh, I had 35 on that one. For our, uh, you know, for our viewers, we're used to your scale, uh, Uncle Jim. Yeah, 136. So it's kind of cool to see the HO stuff that, you know, they, there's a, a track. You saw a box art for it. I was just talking about that. That had like a dad and his kids and it was a tiny plastic yeah. track. Is that, is that yeah, the scale yeah. we're talking? Yeah, okay. That's the scale. That's yeah. The HO. You know, that track is only about this wide. Wow. So in a bedroom, a kid could get a whole big HO. Lamp. Take a look at oh, that. There oh, here we there's go. There's the track okay. itself. There we go. Yep. There's the track. Oh, beautiful. Okay, and so. now what's the manufacturer of this? Aurora. Will cool. all those kind of HO cars run on that track? Look at that, yeah. Mm -hmm. Or are there different tracks for different HO no. cars? No, they're all, they'll all run on them. That's pretty cool. Okay. When it's okay. That's awesome. Awesome. So, 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 Jim, that's kind of like the classic way of, I mean, not the classic way, but it's it's kind of the the more uh, commercialized way of, of racing. Yeah. Made, they, made more people would have these. I, I think they made more home sets out of HO yes. far than they did 132nd. Oh, yeah, yeah. You could get a figure eight in your bedroom in 132nd. Yeah. That's about it. Right. And, of course, 124th was really big. Yeah, forget, forget it, yeah. yeah. You can get a lot of racing. Yes, you can. Yeah. yeah. You can really... Uh, you could really do quite a setup, you know, with a smaller scale. That's I get. I mean, that's the benefit of it. If you're if you're looking to race and you only got a small room, you know, you got HO cars for that exact purpose. And they're beautiful models. I mean, take a look at some of them. Yes. Are these HO or these matchbox? Are these actual race cars? They are. Look at that. Yeah, those are slot cars. Yeah, those are those are. Cars that go on each other. Take a look at that. They're beautiful models. I mean, these are beautiful models. scale wheels, tires. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a fun hobby. These are all HO cars. There's yeah. all different manufacturers in here. These are Aurora. These are Aurora Tyco. Um, G Plus series from later Aurora. Atlas cars. Uh, Tyco S, early generation. Uh, the ones with four pipes are vibrators, which is first generation Aurora. Yeah. When you say first generation, what year would you? That'd be 1958, 1962. Wow. So these cars are reproductions by Mark Vital. He does resin reproductions. He does a nice job. Oh, really? These are original Aurora cars. Everything's varied in price based on availability condition. I think these are called hard body yeah. cars where they take 124th scale models and make them into a race car, a slot car. Right, right. Like, like I did with one? Yeah, yeah. And well, mine went to a little bit more detail. So you can buy store-bought chassis for these cars. And these hard bodies, they hold races at 124th scale commercial tracks. 
look at those. Again, a good example of the difference between 124th scale and 132nd is these pink, and, these pink cars and white cars are 124th, and these are 132nd. Take a look at those. There, yeah, you see the yep. difference. Yep. 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 I see. The 132nd is going to allow a lot more prices. Look at these. Talk about rare. These are slot cars. You see the yep. shoe? Look at that. That motorcycle. A slot motorcycle. Slot motorcycle. That's, that's one thing that we haven't seen on your track yet. We no, just... no, I don't slot think you're going motorcycle? to. Yeah, right yeah. here. Take a look at that. Cool. What is that? Reach over, reach over and hand us one of those, dear. Let me see. What is that? What is that supposed yeah, what, to be? Is that a... It's supposed to that's be... a funny car. Look. It's like a pod or something. That's, that's a... <laughs> Wheel stander. <laughs> I want to say some sort of gimmick slot car. Yeah. I want to say that it, it, it looks like a. It's got a shoe. Yeah, it's a slot car. It's a slot car. I've J never seen one like that. Jim, we have to put it on your track. It's uh, <laughs> these these cars. Uh, this one's one one hundred sixty five dollars and two sixty five. Foam mess. What can you tell us about that? Yeah. That was made in probably 74, 75. It's been sitting in a, it was, the box was never opened that it was in. Wow. It was sitting in New York, in Brooklyn, New York, in the basement of a closed up hobby shop. And it comes with two cars. What makes it unique is it has all of this stuff inside of it. Normally, you just got the black case. Oh. All of us, everybody that's here today has not seen this case with cars <laughs> and cars. Wow. You got two of them. And you got he, had two a, of them. he had a box. Of, well, it was my friend, Eddie. Yeah. Um, he's probably got a that's box. Incredible. Of, that's, incredible. that's really cool. Really very, yeah. Think about this. Well, before you, <laughs> so many years before you were on the earth, right. this was sitting in a basement <laughs> in Brooklyn. New York. Wow. My name is Jimmy. Yeah, I'm Jeff. Jeff? Jeff. I'm Ryan. Nice to meet you, What is this? You can't really mix them because these. Um, this is This is the intro. Yes. I believe they call that the old O gauge. O gauge. Yeah, right yeah, there. Yeah, there it is. O gauge. Uh, these still run. This is on, 130 seconds. Yeah, this still runs on Aurora track. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. Slightly yeah. bigger. Yes. I yeah. never even knew that that existed. Not that well, uh, neither did I. Oh, look and about at the three years ago, I saw one of these driver around <laughs> the, the track. They're actually yeah. fun to drive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my goodness. That makes sense. I mean, they. Yeah, that's pretty yeah. cool. Look at that. I made sure my hands were clean before I picked that up. I knew it was going to be 265. So that's incredible. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Auto World made these parts in the 60s. Wow. And they must have been when they just started. Yeah. What are we I don't even remember these when I was a kid. What are, what are we looking at? These are HO parts made by the Auto World company that is now making the cars. So they, they started with these additional pop up parts back then. Wow. So I just read about it in a book like two years ago. Now Eddie's got these. He's got a whole bit of that. Somebody put this cab on the back of a, of a car. Oh, yeah. they customized it. Yes. Okay, I see. So they customized body and they customized chassis. I, see. I have a friend who's made uh, stretch limousines out of cars. <laughs> right. Really? You take two or three bodies, you cut the midsection out, he glues them in, he glues them together, I think with tester glue, and then he sands them down with like a 2,500 grit sandpaper to get rid of the seam, and he paints them. <laughs> Oh. And they're like stretch limos. He makes cars with uh, double axles. So there's a market for this. There's guys who want those unique HO cars. That's cool. There's guys that make them. There's guys that do all kinds of things. Can I see the blue and white uh, bread wagon car? Right here? Yeah, you know the relevance of this car, guys? What's that? When we were kids, this car never really saw production. But there were more models of this car made back in 63, 64. Right. Than any other, uh, this is the car that um, Shelby's lead driver was killed in right. in the movie uh, Four, Four Horses Ferrari. Oh, uh, this was this was the car that this Ken, was the car. Ken Miles. That's right. Ken yeah. Miles was in this car. They called it the bread wagon. You see the rear window is way back here. Yeah. And the mark. The Mark IV, uh, the next year, didn't look anything like this car. Uh, they changed it completely. However, there's dozens of models and dozens of scales 
of a car that was never produced because they were in a hurry to get pictures of it at Riverside. Not because he died in it, but they, they needed two weeks so that next summer they could get the car made and put out as a model. Right. So yeah. even an HO. They did that. That's pretty cool. I never was in the HO, and I know in 132nd scale, 124th, they sort of evolved into flying wedges, just going so fast. Did the That's HO these. hobby ever do that? Yeah, these cars. Did it, it didn't kill the hobby, though. Those are still fine no, scale they're cars. they're beautiful cars. Yeah, so they're they not like the romp romps or the, oh, the no. thingies. They actually even incorporated clear glass in them. Wow. And put cardboard interiors in HO cars. Oh. Would you to ever have thought it. they would have done that? To lighten it. No, just for appearance reasons. Oh, you think? Um, oh, yeah. For I mean, like, the whole package. Oh, oh, yeah, it's beautiful. Oh, that's oh, a Isn't that amazing? That's a beautiful. That's a it's beautiful, beautiful scale. scale. Yeah, I believe so. That is a gorgeous scale yeah, for such a small all car. Three for 15. Yeah. yeah all what, three would, for what would a car like this go for? Yeah. What, what does this well, model go this for? Well, this happens to be a set only car. Yeah. And they only made the set for like a year. Wow. So these are bringing over a hundred bucks these days. The collector's items, truly. Really and they have traction magnets, oh, and they're all right. balanced arms, and they run really well. That's pretty cool. So they're around a hundred bucks. Yeah. But, it, and it's driven because the set new was like one night. Right. Yeah. So the cars are the value of the set. Exactly. So to speak. This is Ed. This is, this I is usually Ed. go okay. by Eddie. Yeah, you can hear it. We took a close up of those cars. Actually, those yeah, would make a good lead. I mean, they're so beautiful. There you go. Brad, is this your stuff? Excuse me. Sorry, guys. Yeah. Yeah, I saw you bought that other stand. Yeah. Yeah. I bought two of them. Huh? <laughs> uh, Brad, is this your stuff? Yes. Uh, what do you think about the market of, uh, of, of scale models, the 124th scale? Is, is the day of guys buying a scale model in the 124th and putting it on a chassis over, hard body? Well, in terms of making them for slot cars, there's a few people who still do it, but there's still a lot of model car, model builders. It, that's probably bigger than, the, bigger than the slot car industry, really. Now, there's still, we know the people who will turn them into slot cars. It's the only reason that these were bought, was going to turn them into slot cars. But there's still a lot of people who build the models themselves. Yeah, I like to do that. You know, I, I like to take, make 124 scale hard bodies, but where do you race them these days? You need a commercial track. Mm, and other than the one in Lincoln Park. Um, Which I heard is closing. And it probably is. If you don't know your building, it's a tough business to be in. Think about the square footage yeah, that you've got to have for a track like that. And if you don't own your building and you got to pay rent on it, then, you know, unless you've got some other things to make up for that amount of square footage. Yeah, it's tough. It's, it's tough. tough business. And that's the same everywhere around the world. All the tracks but, the same But this route. is where, as you know, as somebody with a track in your basement, that's, we build tracks in our basement. We're lucky here. We have basements. We can do that. Ah, uh, yeah. You know, so you think about that. There's how, how many basement tracks are in the Detroit area? 10, 12, maybe 15, where guys have got big setups in their own homes. Yeah. So, Brad has raised his power ways there. Yeah. Wow. Mm. Used to regularly go. Uh, the, you know, Bordeaux was back on this year. I was there in May, June. I still have your posters. I did everything. Uh, your friends there, do they have tracks in their basement? No. no. Nobody's got basements there. Some people have a loft in a garage or a garage. So yeah. We get a lot of response from people on the website. Yeah. yeah, I'm sure it's the Germans who probably, uh, the, well, the Brits as well. They they just love that stuff. But um, but again, it's a it's a small hobby. But the people who like it, they like it. They're passionate about it. It's clear from the comments we receive on on these videos, you guys out there are definitely uh, definitely passionate about this hobby. Now, it's good that the Detroit area has so many basement tracks. You know, you could keep the keep the, the sport alive, you know, not dependent, I suppose, on those right. on those fellas that have to pay rent on those buildings. You know. I, I could see why that would be difficult, you know, unless you have like yeah. a gaming shop or something. To there, go there have been two, and, it, and it's sad because um, one was in New York City, Buzzarama Raceway. You may have seen up on the stage, Eddie's got a Buzzarama shirt on. That shop had been open since 65 on Church Avenue in Brooklyn. 
and uh, been there forever. But he bought the building way back when. He'd been offered millions for the building. He liked his slot car stuff. That was what he did. The other one was Tom Thumb in Columbus, Ohio. And he just retired like a month ago. So he shut down the business. Been there since the mid-60s. Why? Because his father bought the building way back when. Got on, got on the real estate. Uh, it's, you got to pay rent. That's difficult. And again, so much of it is seasonal. Think about here. Things shut down in the summer. People go north. People got their boats, motorcycles. They go, they go travel. It's a winter time yeah. for us, yeah. yeah. Because yeah. what else are we gonna do, you know, yeah, yeah, for six yeah. months of the year, right? I used to think that because AMT was a local uh, factory, a local, a local company, that we have more scale models than people around the world. Huh? AMT, so might be MPC, PC, IMC, they were all Detroit companies. Yeah. Yeah. And then out in California, you had Ravel and some of the other specialty makers. Chicago was Monogram, Strombecker. So that, that's three cities where, and then New York had Aurora. So, um, yeah, you're right. Yeah, it's well, you're bad memories, yeah. What he's talking about is this guy. Yeah, take a look. AMT. Ravel, not, not a grand Ravel, just in the last decade came together. Yeah, uh, Ravel actually bought what was left of Monogram. And I, I don't remember when it was that they combined, but yeah. And I think it was about 10 years ago. Here's AMT. Yeah, I was going to say, there's an AMT uh, car. They, they uh, were out of Detroit. There's a couple of AMT cars here. Yeah. Um, uh, no, then, these then there's are, Monogram without... Uh, and now, these know. are recent repops. You know, they, they, these are recently redone kits. These are not the original. They're not. If this was an original. There'd be one or two of them. Really? Yeah. Because they look, uh, yeah. they look yeah. exactly as they would. You know, down to the font and the artwork. It's been a really cool show. I mean, we've talked to a lot of great guys, and they clearly not only are very knowledgeable but very passionate about this. Oh yeah. Very much so. I don't want to put this stuff down. I want to take this. Home just for the box. Yeah, I mean, look at that. Yeah. We, we were pointing that out earlier, but this it's a cool show to uh, to come and see, and I know you guys out there definitely will enjoy seeing, you know, this gathering of people and the amount of stuff that they got here, the amount of cool stuff they got here. Um, but you know, yeah, it's just it's just a real cool, uh, real cool event. Anyway, uh, thank you for joining us, Uncle Jim, again. We're finally outside the uh, the the, yeah. the basement, <laughs> right? But uh, yeah, thank you guys for joining us. We hope that you enjoyed this little look into one of the slot car shows around our area. If you like this sort of content, be sure to drop a like. If you want to see more, why don't you give us a subscribe and we'll be posting some more soon. Uh, other than that, we'll see you next time. Signing off.